Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Murray. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not by Star Wars Podcast. Today, in continuing our catalog of the characters of the sequel trilogy, we come now to Rose Tico, played by the effervescent Kelly Marie Tran. who, may I say, looked adorable at the Oscars on Sunday. Rose Tico was first introduced to us in Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. It, very much like the land of Rose is introduced in the second chapter as a significant character that plays a significant role in the middle film and in the last film. Now you may be saying, well how did she play a large role in The Rise of Skywalker? We'll get to that in a minute and, and I have many thoughts on the situation. Now I'm not going to necessarily recap her story but let me begin by talking about Rose's sister, Paige. Paige was killed in Poe Dameron's bombing run on the First Order Dreadnought as the Resistance was trying to make its escape. Unfortunately, Paige's blood is on Poe's hands because he foolishly chose to ignore Leia's order to return to pull back from the attack. He disobeyed that order and led to the death of the entire bombing fleet as well as most of the fighters that were sent to engage. Just so we know, it's it unfortunately is Poe's fault that Paige Tico was killed. However, it is thanks to the heroics of Paige Tico that the Dreadnought was destroyed. I believe that if the Dreadnought had been on the trail or on the tail of the Resistance along with the rest of the First Order fleet, probably would have been even worse than what already happened. So, thanks to Tage's heroics, the Dreadnought was destroyed. Now, I do like the visual image that Paige had the necklace, the, the half-moon shaped necklace, and that Rose had another one. So that when we see Rose sitting and crying, holding the necklace, we know exactly what it means. It means that the girl who was killed was her sister. Or at least a relative at that point, before we learn specifically. That's a nice little visual way of telling us that the two are connected. without really needing to say it. And in, uh, and in fact, it's not till like a scene later that Rose says, you know, my sister just died. You know, so now we know. We connect the dots and go, aha, it's, it's her sister. Now, Poe, or Finn, I should say, Finn was trying to run away. He was not trying to run away out of cowardice, but to protect Ray. With the binary beacon that he was wearing, he was afraid that if Ray came back and followed the beacon home, she'd be stuck with the rest of them 
in their escape from the first one. But Rose was very dismayed at Finn's decision. Thinking that he was being a coward and trying to run away. She didn't seem too convinced when he explained what he was doing. However, Finn and Rose were able to piece together how the First Order was tracking the Resistance fleet through hyperspace. Uh, because and I think the logic is that you can follow someone through hyperspace only if you put a tracking device on the ship. I guess it was just assumed by everyone in the resistance that no tracking device had been put on any of their ships. So they had, the First Order had figured out a way to do it without placing a tracking device. I, I assume that that is the logic behind it. There's a there's a, some major logical questions that The Last Jedi raises about uh, certain technology in the Star Wars universe. That being said, Finn and Rose figure out how the First Order is tracking them. Come up with a crazy plot uh, you know, team up with Poe, they get a hold of Maz, and she says, find the codebreaker, so Finn and Rose go to find the codebreaker on Cantabite. All the while, Poe not telling Admiral Aldo what they were doing, which he should have. Yet another thing, unfortunately, another thing to add to Poe's scorecard, a number of times my stupidity has caused nothing but chaos. And death, unfortunately. So through a convoluted plan, they, they get DJ to team up with them. He helps them get in to the uh, first turn of flagship. Their plan fails, they're captured, yada yada yada. You know, and I'm sure you know the rest of the story. So I think that if I may be critical for a moment, I think the plan was kind of ridiculous. And I, I'm not talking about the why did Admiral Holdo tell Power plan? No, no, no. I'm talking about why in the world did Finn, Rose, and Poe not tell Admiral Holdo? their plan. And so the plan on Cantobite or in Cantobite ends up being probably more complicated than it needs to be. But long story short, Rose helps Finn learn the value of taking a stand for a cause. Through the freeing of the Fathiers and busting through the streets of Cantobite, Finn learns that he can't just sit on the sidelines anymore. He has to join the fight. And they free the Fathiers, and this helps Finn understand that lesson. So that is why when Captain Phasma says to Finn, you were always scum. Finn proudly responds, rebel scum. And that decision to take a stand, to join the resistance, to fight for a cause, is all thanks to the morals of Rose. Rose knows a thing or two about the value of friendship, the value of fighting back, the value of saving what we love, not destroying what we hate. Now, one thing that causes 
uh, a good amount of debate and argument within the fandom is Finn's aborted attack or failed attack on the First Order cannon. When the resistance is pulled up on crate, the First Order brings forth a cannon that will break down the door. Finn knows from his knowledge of the technology that if you shoot down the basically the throat of the cannon, it will destroy it. Or gotta get close enough and get off a good shot, kinda of right down his throat. Now as Finn was on the way to do this, the cannon started firing. I would assume that he lost his chance. So for some reason he was going to try to make a self-sacrifice, uh, basically kamikaze attack on the cannon. But as we saw, his ski speeder was melting as he got closer and closer. It is at that moment that Rose rams her ski speeder into Thin, knocking him out of the path of the laser. Finn runs over to Rose, and, and right before she passes out, and says, you know, why did you do that? And that's, of course, when Rose gives her famous line. Now, a lot of people wonder at the logic of this scene, why Rose did what she did. For me, personally, and this is only my own opinion, because the cannon had started firing, and Finn's ski speeder was melting. Finn's attack would have done nothing to the cannon. I mean, basically would have killed himself trying to do... trying to save the day when I think even he knew it wasn't going to work. Given how his speeder was melting, how the heat was flaring, and with the laser firing, I don't think Finn would have ever been able to get there and destroy it. Why he kept going, I don't know. Maybe he thought sacrificing himself for the cause would be better. But Rose decided to save him. There are a good number of fans who don't quite understand this, but for me personally, his attack would have been completely useless. And he would have been throwing away his life for no reason. So Rose decided to step in and save the day, save him. So, you know, we could debate that, but his attack would have done nothing, in my opinion. So I'm glad she did what she did. And I like her philosophy. That's how we're going to win. Not destroying, not fighting what we hate, but saving what we love. That's a good maxim for Star Wars fans. Let's celebrate what we love about Star Wars, not what we don't love. Okay. So, we, we pretty much covered that. Now let's talk briefly about Rose in The Rise of Skywalker. I am of the opinion that she was underused, and I was kind of sad about that. That is not to say that I am completely and utterly angry about it. No, no. I'm not particularly pleased about it. But I understand that it was necessary. Now, the reason I say it was necessary is because this is the story. For the first time in the trilogy, where Finn, Ray, and Poe, our trio of the trilogy, are working together. 
Now, the rows could have been part of that. It could have been kind of a quad quadrangle. And that's fine, but I just it just I don't think would have worked in the sense that I believe that you do not make the movie to suit the character. You make the character to suit the movie. Now Rose didn't have to accompany them in their adventure. Uh, but there could have been some more scenes with her at the resistance base. And I'm sure that there were other scenes filmed that were not used. Uh, in fact, I believe I read somewhere that she was in some scenes with Leia. That had to be cut because the scenes didn't look good. They weren't going to work. And as you recall from the movie, there was already enough trouble getting the visuals and the use of Princess Leia to actually work in the movie. It's, it's interesting to imagine that there were scenes that looked worse. And I'm, I'm okay with the scenes that they did, but they, they could have, you know, they, they were already stretching the boundaries of what they could do. I can't even imagine what these other scenes would have looked like. And apparently some of those scenes involved rows, and they had to be cut because they didn't look good. Uh, I don't know how many scenes or how much, but even apart from those, I do believe that there were plenty of other scenes filmed with rows, but the movie had to be edited in a way that would tell the story that J.J. Abrams wanted to tell. So editing is like that. You have to cut out some stuff because it's not going to fit what you want. So I am disappointed, but I understand it. I do believe that there were that there was more. Rose didn't need a lot of scenes. No, no. I think Rose needed more in the way of usefulness in the story. Regardless of how much screen time that was, it didn't have to be a lot. But a little bit more, just to make her feel more of a presence in the movie. Now, you remember at the beginning of my podcast, the beginning of today's episode, I said, Rose does contribute to the Rise of Skywalker. Now, Rose did not go on the adventure with our three heroes because General Leia wanted Rose to study the specs of the First Order, or should I say, Final Order Star Destroyers. The ones that Palpatine was going to give to Kylo Ren. Now, they all had those planet-destroying cannons on their, on their underbelly. Or on their underside. Rose was the one through examining the blueprints and specs that they had acquired, discovered that if they were to destroy those cannons, it would cause a reaction that would destroy the whole ship. You know, fairly straightforward thing to figure out, but Rose figured it out. In fact, I believe at the briefing before the Battle of Exegol, She's the one who said, we got to destroy those cannons. Then, because they'll destroy the entire ship. And thank goodness for that, because if Rose had not figured that out, I think that the resistance would have probably been mincemeat. Um, because I believe that the way it works is, they couldn't turn on their shields in Exegol's atmosphere because of how, um, how incredibly volatile the atmosphere is. I think Rose also is the one who pointed that out, I believe. So with their shields turned off, there was no shielding to protect the cannon. 
Therefore, hitting the cannons would have been easier, as there were no shields to protect them. At least that's how I interpret it. So that being said, I think Rose does contribute to the rise of Skywalker more than she is often given credit for. I do believe that she could have been used better. No, I don't. I'm not asking for a lot more screen time. I just think she needed a little bit more. Because with the character, it doesn't matter how much screen time they get. It's about how they're used. Let's think. I don't think that. Well, let's look. The original Star Wars trilogy, and I know this for a fact. Darth Vader is in 36 minutes of the original trilogy. 36 minutes out of six and a half hours. He was used so well, it didn't matter that it was fairly limited. So that's the thing. It's not about how much screen time they get, it's about how they're used. So I think Rose could have been used better. That being said, I think she does contribute to the Rise of Skywalker. Now, let me just conclude with two things. One, how do I feel about the character? And two, how do I feel about the actress's performance? I actually like Rose. I really do. Um, I think that she might be a little bit underserved by some of the writing. But overall, it, it, it's not enough to make me too distraught. I enjoy the character regardless. And I think she is well used in teaching Finn the value of taking a stand. Finn's collaboration with the Resistance proves to be invaluable. And it's Rose who really gave him the courage to stand up for a cause. The Force Awakens taught Finn the value of standing up for a person. The Last Jedi, with the help of Rose, helped Finn understand the value of taking a stand for a cause. So Rose is really well used in that sense. I enjoy the character. I really do find her to be a charming screen presence. And I just think that she does contribute and I would like to see more of those. That's really the, the barometer for me is would I like to see more stories about this character? And the answer is yes. Though maybe used a little bit better than she was used in the sequel trilogy. In terms of writing, particularly. Now, let's talk about Kelly Marie Tran. Kelly Marie Tran is such an exuberant, effervescent, adorable, energetic presence. And I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. Kelly Marie Tran, I hope, has a really good career. Star Wars was really her first major claim to fame. Uh, complete obscurity, really, when she started The Last Jedi. And The Rise of Skywalker, but I really hope that in the future, her career gets bigger and brighter. Because I think that she is such a charming figure. I would hate to see that charm not be used in cinema. So Kelly Marie Tran is awesome, and Kelly, if you're out there listening, good job. Thank you so much for what you brought to Star Wars. And so those are my thoughts on Rose Tico. There is so much more we could say about this character, but I really enjoyed this character. I know not everybody does, so this is just my opinion. 
but she is a great contribution to the Star Wars universe. And I hope that there are more stories in whatever form they take about Rose Tico. My name is Brendan Barr, and that noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. May the Force be with you.